ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We proudly present this podcast to you in all its glory. They are the bearded wonders, the twin sons from different mothers. He is Blake. He is Sal. And together they are the Blake and Sal Show. And if you're not okay with that, I have two words for you. Stay tuned. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Blake and Sal Show. This is a very special episode because we're going to be going to another Clerks Redux, but it's this special one. It is the return of Marilyn Gigliotti, one of the stars of Clerks, and talking about her brand new Indiegogo campaign. Now, as you listen to the interview, we're going to be talking and breaking down the story behind her campaign. Right here in the description, in your podcast player, you can look at your phone or whatever you're listening to this show on, and there's a link. Click on that. Go support her Indiegogo campaign. There you go. Now, sit back and enjoy the show. We'll be back next week, me and Mark, with a special guest, Bruce Mitchell, with a very special wrestling discussion. See you next week. Hey, this is Marilyn Gigliotti. Hey, this is Brian O'Holloran. Hey, everybody. My name is Scott Schiaffo, actor best known as the Chulies Gum Guy from the film Clerks. And welcome to Clerks Minute. You're listening to Clerks Minute. And I'm not even supposed to be here today. Hi, this is Mike Zapsick from AMC's Comic Book Man, the podcast I sell comics, and the Ming and Mike Show. And you're listening to Clerks Minute. What's up, everybody? This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Man. You got a minute? Good, because you're listening to Clerks Minute. Hey, this is Walt Flanagan, the Lon Chaney of the 90s, and you are listening to Clerks Minute. Clerks Minute Summer Series. My name is Blake, and Kyle will be back next week when we continue the um, animated series. But we are taking a break because I have a very special guest on the line, and it is, as said on That Man on Fat Man, the First Lady of Clerks, Marilyn Gigliotti. Marilyn, how you doing? Hi, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I listened to that interview and that cracked me up, so I had to bring it up again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get used to that. I mean, it's you know, it's a nice little reference, but it's like, yeah, I'm gonna have to get used to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it personally. So, <laughs> so, well, we are here to talk about your Indiegogo. Before we get to that, I have that question. Um, I was all over your yeah. social media in the last week, and I saw a bunch of um, pictures of you seeing clerks at a screening. So, since this is that show, yeah, why'd you explain what that fun. was about? <laughs> Well, well, since this is the show that we talk clerks everywhere, why don't you explain to everybody what that was? Yeah, so um, there's this event that goes on out here for the last seven years that I never knew about, and it's called Eat, See, Hear. And so what they do is they screen movies outdoors. They have food trucks, and they have music just prior to the screening of whatever film that they have for that week. Um, I believe it's only like a summer series, and I don't know how for how many weeks. Um, and they usually have done them uh, somewhere in Santa Monica. Uh, but uh, this year, some of the screenings are taking place over at the Gene Autry Museum in, at Griffith Park. Um, someone had told me about it about a week and a half prior to its screening, they had found out about it, and um, I, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna contact them, but just was really swamped with some work, and so uh, it was the following week, probably about four or five days prior to the actual screening, that I was like, oh wait, I need to do this, and so I contacted Jordan, who is Jason's wife, Kevin's assistant, to find out if Kevin knew anything about it. And she said that he didn't, uh, but he unfortunately was going to be out of town. So I just took it upon myself. It's like, well, then I will contact them on my own and see what I can put together. And uh, they were more than happy to hear from me and have me introduce the film. That is pretty cool, actually. We actually I just attended an outdoor screening here. They did a um, we do special events here in Wisconsin, and we did a greatest showman 
outdoors. That was a lot of fun. Oh, so, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, that would have been awesome. Yeah, they had a full out like outdoor, the big, big like speakers outside. It, unfortunately, it was. I was saying right before we went on the air, it was like ninety degrees here. It was like sixty five and raining that night. Unfortunately, yeah. so it wasn't nearly as much fun as it could have been. But it, yeah, I completely yeah. get that. I love I love outdoor experiences like that. Yeah, me too. And and you know there there is a place here that does outdoor screenings um o- over at the hollywood forever cemetery in hollywood every year um i think it's for the most part all year round and it's called synespia Sines- something like that um but they've never shown clerks that i'm aware of and i've always you know thought it's like oh, it would be cool if they did and so somebody else beat them to it <laughs> <laughs> and it is it's the 20th anniversary all right so it's fun it's definitely fun. It's, well it is um, – it's 25 years 25 since years, sorry. inception. Sorry, is that I meant? Yeah, 20, yeah, 24 years since its release. Yes. I, I, I should know that. I don't know why I said it that way. I should yeah. know that. I've been doing this for a year. I should know exactly what we came <laughs> <out>. <laughs> Oh, man. I, I, you know, I myself um, – was looking it up just to make sure I had the math correct. Yes. Um, uh, before, you know, cause I was, I was trying to get a handle. It's like, all right, what am I going to say? What am I going to talk about? And, and I, uh, you know, I don't want it to be too quick, but I don't want it to be, well, I, let's put it, let's be honest. It's like, I cannot be as long winded as, Ke- as Kevin and Brian. Who can? Um, so, <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way, you know? <laughs> I mean, who who can honestly? Let's be honest here. There's not many people that can talk like Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Nobody I know that can do a entire comedy um a comedy set on one question. Only person I know. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I remember watching that special, and I'm like, wow, this is why with the weirdest hour and a half I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> but no, it was it was really great. Um, just to you know, have the reaction and hear everybody's reactions and just kind of add my two cents when I tell Dante where to go. Of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but then again, um, it was also a little sad when um, Lisa's parts came up and just a reminder that she's no longer with us. Yeah, it's it's it. That is really sad. And well, funny part right now for us, we're prepping clerks too. We're actually in the middle of prepping clerks too for our run. And it's funny watching everything and going into color. I'm not used to watching a color movie. It's been like a year doing doing clerks, so it's weird going into color now for us. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to this Indiegogo campaign. What? Uh, why don't you explain the the theory of letters thing that you're a part of over on Indiegogo? I actually have it up on my screen here, so I didn't mess up the title. <laughs> yeah, and well, you know what? And, and thank you so much for you know having me on the show and uh, being able to kind of get the word out there because I you know really want this to be ex- as successful as we can hope it to, to be and uh, be able to do this project. Well, no problem but, at all. Um, mm-hmm. Back in – the way it started was back in the end of January, I was in a short film uh, where Tom Proctor did his directorial debut. And when I got back, you know, it, it's especially having been on many short films, whether it be in front or behind the camera, and then being there and – being able to be heard in voice because I, I I played a character as well as doing hair and makeup. Um, that for the last I don't even know how many years how I've been wanting to direct is just so solidified. Every time I get on set and and see all the different things that I know that I sh- I can do and that I see should be done and things like that. Um, so when I got back I was basically saying to myself you know it, it's up to you now to shit or get off that pot and, and so I, I had to get off that pot and that there's just no better way of me saying it oh, fair enough <laughs> um, and so I had an idea for a short film I at least for a better part of 10 to 15 years um, and 
I, I actually have a feature length film that I'd like to direct, but knowing that who's going to give me a million dollars to do a feature when they don't know what I can do. So I knew I had to do a short film and, uh, never wanted to do crowdfunding, but I know that at this point it's like, this is the only way it's going to happen. Um, and I started, I, I put the thought to paper for the first time since I thought of this short film idea, uh, never having written a script, mind you. And so it, it was basically kind of done from scene to scene to scene to scene because it, it's, it's, there's not a lot of dialogue in this piece. Um, but once I really had to put it into a script form, I was like really proud of the fact that I actually did get it to script form. Uh, but I sent it out to a couple people, an editor, DP that I uh, have in mind, or did have in mind, and their response was creepy. So I'm like, okay, that's good. <laughs> um, so I was about, I don't know, a couple weeks into getting everything together, what I have to do, and when I was contacted by other friends that they are doing some short films and wanted to have a meeting with me. So I met with them. They told me how they have a concept of basically, instead of filming one short film, that they would film several because it would be cheaper to do that versus one. Because if there's, say, a scene in a bedroom or a living room and that can be used in several of the shorts, then... It, it becomes a little bit more doable that, that way. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense, actually. Yeah. Um, and then also that the concept of all the short films, or not necessarily a concept, but because they all stand alone on their own, but they all tie in together, not in the sense of one leads to the other, but the theme is all a written letter. Oh, that's cool. Because it's you know who writes letters anymore really true. very it's, very it's, true it's my art mm -hmm. and um so once they were done you know they wanted me in two of their short films and wanted me to come on as producer i basically said well you know i happen to have just started putting my own project together and this is what i was going to be doing um, and they said, you know what, send it to me, bring it along. It's like, we'll put it in with everybody else's and we're going to be reading everybody else's scripts and let's, let's all join forces. So, I mean, it just seemed to be a little serendipitous in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, uh, once we started that, um, everybody read everybody else's script and someone came up in a, with an idea of how to be able to incorporate a written letter into my script and I really liked it and if anything it kind of added to the intrigue uh, of my script so yeah and uh, for the last four months I think it's like we basically just meet every Thursday planning as to you know how we were going to go about doing everything what we we're going to offer for our Indiegogo uh, the video that we were going to shoot, uh, the script that we put together, because myself and another member called, uh, named Brian Shakti, uh, we got together and we put the script together. And so I was kind of very proud of myself to, to even do that. And uh, I, I've had many people say that it's like, oh, you should write a script. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a writer. I, I, it's very difficult for me to, just sit in front of a computer and just let the ideas come. But I think I can do well when I sit down with somebody else and be able to do that. I, you know what? I completely agree with that. It's something, it's something easier about actually writing at the pair than writing by yourself. I, I could easily get bored. I could easily get bored if I'm sitting yeah. typing a lot myself. It's impossible for me because I've tried to write. I tried to be, tried to write a long time ago and I can't do it. It's impossible. I, I envy people that could do it. <laughs> Yeah, it, like, for me, I can't shut my mind off enough to be able to just kind of sit in quiet. Um, I, I, you know, I start thinking about all the other things that I need to be doing, or I get distracted and 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 sidetracked 
really easily. I don't like quiet like, either. I don't like quiet. It's just it's nerve wracking for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I actually do like quiet, but.